Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to our Helpful Honda Music Lounge. I'm Kristen Limon from Alt 98.7. Really appreciate everybody carving some time out today to be here. But given who we get to spend the next hour with, I'm not surprised at how packed this room is. So let's bring them out. Long Beach's very own Give It Up for Cold War Kids! <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Very excited to have you, especially with so much cool stuff going down. You guys have just come off of a tour with Tears for Fears earlier this summer. Spent six weeks with them, right? I mean, yeah. kind of pretty amazing. Yeah, we, we uh, it ended at the Hollywood Bowl. Right We're going to get into so, that, too. What oh. um, what was your <laughs> reaction when you got that news, like you're going to open for Tears for Fears? We were really excited. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, like tours like that, um, that are, you know, come up once in a while and they're, you know, big rooms all across the country, amazing, um, and uh, yeah, it came up and it was a perfect fit and we got to hang with those guys some and they, they were like, they, they really told, they were, they were telling us what a great fit it was and we were like, yeah. That's been validating. Cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you guys aren't strangers to being in big rooms and headlining your own shows, what did it feel like to be an opener again? It kind of didn't feel like we were opening it. Kind of like a lot of the shows felt like our own shows in a weird, you know? It, it, we were playing almost an hour before them, and it was like, it was incredible. Um, the Denver show stuck out to me as just, I was like, it felt like it was everyone was there for us just as much as Tears for Fears. Very awesome. Yeah. And again, you did close out at the Hollywood Bowl, and I feel like there's just kind of some extra magic about being in your hometown and then closing out a big tour like that. What is particularly special about hometown shows for you guys? You know, it's a mixed bag. It's definitely more stressful and a lot of family and friends want to come out, especially that one, because it's like, I mean, a summertime show at the Hollywood Bowl and Tears for Fears. Like, I realized even um, uh, in, before we got the tour, knowing their music, um, but like um, just everyone we know had a, connection to them in a way that was like everyone needed to go so it's you know it's a little stressful but it's like um <laughs> but uh yeah i think like um just even getting out of there and like you're walking down the hill and it's a, kind of impossible to get a car it's so crazy there's a million people and you're just kind of walking amongst a million people and it was a nice way for me to just kind of be myself and like walk uh Forever. Um, <laughs> and, and it really is a long track. And, and, and it, it really is. And then, um, but yeah, it was weirdly like a fitting ending to it. Very cool. Well, I think it's time to do a song. So, yeah. performing live in the Helpful Honda Music Lounge, Cold War Kids. Thank you, guys. Okay, this is the new one. This is called Run Away With Me. That's scary to say that. <laughs> but it's gonna be good. Here we go. Your time has come, the 
us make believe Things are getting serious I believe in fate Don't it make you furious When you play it safe You may find another lover I may be So it wasn't wrong, it was just a negative note. <laughs> um, well, that's from the new album, which we are getting November 3rd. And I read that that song particularly set the tone for the album. What was it about it, and when did you know, like, this is the direction we're going in? Um, well, we were talking about, like, we're... This is, this is early pandemic, and we were kind of just, just doing whatever, because we, you know, it was, it was strange, and it was... Um, you know, we were in the studio and we were like, hey, we're not even supposed to be in the studio. The guy who was a producer, Carlos, I actually gave him COVID. Oh no! I didn't know that I had, I gave it to him, it felt bad. Um, it's, yeah, it's a long story. Um, but yeah, it was like the, this kind of feeling of like everything felt really grim and, uh, and over the course of writing some music, I realized like, I don't want anything that we do during this time to sound like how this feels right now. I want to like do something that feels the opposite. That feels like um, revelatory, and you know, like um, so. This song, "Run Away with Me," we're listening to a lot of like '70s David Bowie and Sly the Family Stone and all yeah. kinds of stuff that just felt like an escape. And "Run Away with Me" is an escape. And so, um, yeah, that's how that came out. I mean, you also have songs like the first one we got, which is "Double Life," and then the new one we just got another name, and those really lean into the more gritty moments of life, you know, lots of vulnerability. Why was it important for you guys to share those feelings? Um, I don't, I mean, I guess that's kind of the, what we've always done playing with like the really personal and the more like kind of narrative stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's, it's, we've been doing this for 20 years. This is our 10th record. So we decided to make it a self-titled one, so that's cool. And I, I feel like um, you know, the more time that passes, the more it's like, uh, just finding ways uh, to go further with it and to say more and 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 uh, take the music further and and being more vulnerable, revealing more. That you know, I always hate like confessional song yeah. writing. I hate people that's just like, oh my god, I I revealed more of myself than I ever did before here. And it's like. I do, my the, my eyes roll back in my head when <laughs> yeah. I hear that, and so I. But at the same time, I felt like I needed to do some of that. Um, maybe because we hadn't as much, or because I was a little afraid to. So. You don't That's, make you look afraid. You make it look easy, all of you guys. So. Well, thank you. <laughs> all right. With that, I say we get another song. Okay. Cool. Uh, this song is called Double Life. Uh... 
Since 2006, I haven't been the same. Between fiction and fact, which would others change? Now I'm a mother of three. I'm not living for myself. I'm dancing right here, but my heart is somewhere else. Sing my song. Push me home, back to bed When you live a double life, it's dangerous So oh, not to feel love, not to feel Keep it calm, 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 it's dangerous So oh, not to feel love, not to be too much or, or or you know be digging around yeah. because it's sort of just like doesn't it's um you know can be fruitless <laughs> i don't want to play it you know yeah. and, and then and that makes you know it and and um and it, it lets you see how people react to it and that's you know the best part now two years must have been a nice break but i can imagine being the musicians that you are the creativity just doesn't shut off what do you do when you get an idea for a song um, well, we were working the whole time. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it was more, uh, an, uh, more about uh, just kind of changing it up, and that means really more like finding different producers to work with, different like different people that um, that just bring a new flavor, you know. And a lot of it, um, we worked so many ways since the start of the band, the um, and. and uh, you know, writing together, recording together, living together in this way that, um, you know, as it's evolved and going to work with different producers that work in a different way, um, you know, that have such totally different styles, different experiences. This guy, Malay, is a producer that did like Frank Ocean Lord to, you know, um, this guy, Ethan Gruska, we did this song, Another Name, and that's like his own, he has his own style. So, so this record to me, a lot of it was about going to people to, Kind of let them do what they do as as producers that they they have a, a sound that we can you know kind of collaborate with the Golden Kids sound and so um, that was a lot of it so it was writing the whole time but also um, you know not being so quick to put it out gotcha. I think was the 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 restraint to practice does it get hard holding it in like the restraint yeah um, but. 
you know, I think that, you know, caring and, like, that, that like, kind of walking that line between, like, um, uh, you know, a, a lot of people kind of told us, like, during that time, like, hey, chill out. Mm. You've done so much for so long. You've toured so much and you put out so much music. Um, and I think it actually, in the in the big sense, you know, for me, family and life and everything, like, it was important to do that and um, to not, like, find myself in, like, productivity. Just always, you know, because it is a great feeling to, you know, but you know, kind of becomes that thing of like, is this for my good feeling or is it for the, 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 the greater thing, the, the kind of like the music really connecting and mattering to people and being able to um, perform it and, and have it be, you know, felt. Yeah. So, yeah. I feel that, leaning into the uncomfortable. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> all right, all you guys. <sighs> okay. Got me in my head. <laughs> getting all philosophical. Okay, we're gonna play another new one. Should we do that or what do we do? Um, yeah. This is another one of my favorite ones. Are we supposed to talk some too? Yeah. I don't know. This is free for all. This is for you. Talk lots. Talk lots. Talk lots. Talk lots. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Um, hell yeah. Uh, this is another new record song. The song is called Stray. Uh -huh. and, this, and again, shouldn't say it. This is the first time we've done this one. <laughs> so.
you guys. Our food kind of spoiled. We're getting like so many first times of you guys performing songs. A lot of them from the new album, which again, out November 3rd. Binge it, listen to it, ultimately love it. Um, yeah, and you guys have been a band for 20, or coming up on 20 years, just shy of it. How has your creative process evolved throughout the years? Um, so much, uh, I was saying before, like, yeah, uh, we started off very much like, uh, in a room playing and making songs out of it and, you know, and, um, and so now to come at it from a lot of times, you know, a producer and myself just like, you know, thinking more through the lens of like songwriting and, and, um, it's, it's in some ways very different, um, and, uh, but always kind of like finding a way to connect what we do now with kind of the, the energy and the sound that it, you know, that was there from day one um, is the thing. Is that ever a challenge to like, because obviously you want to grow, but you want to also remain true and authentic. Like, how do you find that balance? Yeah. You know, in a weird way, I was thinking about this record partially because um, for so many reasons uh, and part of making the self-titled record, I almost thought to myself, like, maybe this is the last one that I would do that, that I would, like, want to try to hold on, like, to try to keep all those, you know, elements and really, like, you know, go a different way after this. Because there is, like, a, there's a sound that, that's always been there with this band, um, and I, it, it is a lot to try to, to try to always, um, to, to move forward, and, and, and I feel like, you know, in a lot of ways it'd be, yeah, it'd just be fun to do something entirely different, and I don't know what that would be, hmm. but, yeah? Well, we'll find out, I guess. The reggae <laughs> record. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Can't wait. What do you think, Moss, the reggae record? <laughs> A country record. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Remember, I had In that... In what style? I don't Like, good. Oh, good. <laughs> In the good stuff. Something like Waylany. Waylon. Yeah, like Willie or Waylany. Willie and Waylany. Yeah. I'm in yeah. Texas all the time because I, I married a Texan, so I'm in Texas all the time, so it's country, and that's all I hear. Yeah. It's, it's changing you. Yeah. It's changing you. I, I, remember, I remember having the idea a couple years ago of re recording Mine Is Yours as a country record. And it, it'd be, I think it'd be so weird and dumb, but also cool. <laughs> We could take a poll and see if that would work. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple old ones for you. Um, this is so tied up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so tired 
superficial Oh, we wound each other up But being true to yourself could never be enough So, so, so tired I try to let go so, 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 so tired Oh, I've been here before Never the best friend My worst enemy You know in sync with each other, even just kind of riffing, oh, let's try this, or let's start this from the beginning. I mean, so it didn't seem like you have done this in a while. But you do have a tour coming up that you announced starting end of January 2024. Yeah. Um, is it safe to assume that not just to, you know, share the music of the new album, but is this also somewhat of a celebration of 20 years of Cold War Kids? Yeah, you know, very much. Um, a lot of music, and uh, yes, one of we, a, a couple of Fonda shows here yes. in L.A., which feels like a, uh, we, we, you know, we've been there, I don't know how many times in the past. Uh, at least five, maybe 20. Yeah. Somewhere between five and 20, yeah. Good range. Um, yeah. It'll be good. Uh, we, we actually, and we did, uh, I mean, I, 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 I feel like the, we, we did the Kings of Leon opening tour, which is a couple of years ago, we did the Tears for Fear. Did we, I don't, did we do like a headlining show in between, or has it been that no, long just, in between? No, just since Besties. We didn't do yeah. a headlining tour so, since like, 2019. Yeah. yeah, and it's you know it's so much different, and um, to have your own, I think you uh, you know being able to do whatever you want comes with a lot of you know it takes a lot more energy, um, but yeah we like to mix it up and and um, and get loose and and play a lot of you know material that we may we may have forgotten about so um, yeah it's it's really fun but it's you know you can't you can't just um, Sit at catering all day, and you know you really gotta. Yeah, we have to play a lot longer these these shows. Yeah. We only played fifty minutes at the Tears for Fears, and we have yeah. to play double that. Yeah, it's a lot of music. But <laughs> these are luxuries. These are all luxuries. I was just yeah. gonna say, yeah. very lucky. <laughs> so very lucky also to be creating music for going on two decades. That's oh my god, a We're, tremendous yeah. journey. What are some challenges that you guys have overcome as a band that you are most proud of? heavy-hitting questions. <laughs> Date line. Um, uh, uh, challenges? Some of the challenges. The, hard, the biggest Or moments you're most proud of. Either most way. Most um, you know, I think, uh, you know, we, it, it, like, because we've had so much success in, in, like, places like this and, you know, um, with, with, you know, like, radio, um, but, but also, you know, fans that have been with us forever. Zoe, hi. <laughs> Zoe is here, and she um, is a like a day one fan, and it's fun because for this record we got to play it for her. Bef it's still not out, but we got to film her doing all this stuff, do, doing like talk, like kind of doing a memory lane, memory lane thing where, um, but playing new music and talking about all this stuff, and in a way, the process of doing this made me like think back a lot more. I think, you, you know, it's, um, and reflect on all the stuff we've done. And, and so, yeah, like, I, existing in the world where we play our shows for our fans, and then also we've had, you know, so much of what I think has made our, uh, given us longevity, is like having a world of radio that, um, that, uh, that it, it's such a gift because it, it um, it's, you show up in certain cities and, and there, there are people there that know you through that. And, yeah. um, so yeah, we're we're just incredibly fortunate. I think our I think our attitude from the beginning was like I can't believe we get to put one record out. So I can't even like, um, uh, which is why earlier I was like even saying the thing of like you know trying to wait to put this record out because I think um, operating on such a like oh my god if we don't you know always you know stay busy that's gonna go away you know yeah. and that I think. Um, uh, that is, uh, you know, 
therapy, you know, for that is okay. good. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the scarcity mentality, you know, that just sort of like, oh my God, it's, you know, it's going to go away. Uh, or, um, you know, so to, to, to really reflect and embrace that, you know, yeah. the 20 years and all this music, all this stuff, it's, it's like, yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, I th I'm grateful in ways that I could never even express. It's incredible. We've, we've, we've been really like, given this life that, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know any other life. It's weird. Yeah. You know? it's, it's, there, um, it's my, our whole adult life. It's a cool Did you thing. want to speak to that, Moss? <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty it's good. It's kind of storytellers, yeah. that is what's happening up here. Yeah. I kept, I don't know why, uh, Flash, when you were talking, it, I le one thing I learned is to not, we, early on we played two shows in one night. In Chicago, two like headlining shows. Okay, how does that even work? Well, I, I don't know. It was ridiculous, and I think it was oversold. So they were like, let's do two uh, shows. Ah, okay. But I learned that night. I learned that night that red wine's a lot more uh, stronger than light beer. Mm. Yeah. So I don't really remember the second show. Can't confirm. But I, yeah. but I, I remember like, I've learned to never do two shows in one night. <laughs> Maybe one of these and the show at the night. You didn't learn anything about drinking that night? <laughs> no, no, no. Kept going. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. If yeah. anything, red wine makes the night go better. That's what I got from that. Yeah. It is a cool thing to have built a community from the ground up. And speaking of Zoe, she has a question. I do want to get to some fan questions before we hit the last song. Um, you've had an amazing run supporting Tears for Fears this summer. Who would be your dream tour mate, dead or alive? Like opening for or just to go on? Let's say co-headlining. Co-headlining. Yeah. I mean, I know, my, I know mine. What's yours? I mean, uh, the U2s. That's, yeah. that's the U2s, mine. The yeah. Clash. Yeah. We need um, to bring some back from the the grave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, is Dead or Alive? Yeah, that's it. Okay, still the U2s for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So many. All right, another question from Mark, who is here from Claremont. Are there any other Southern California bands that had a big influence on your style slash songwriting? Southern California bands. Social distortion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we grew up, so we grew up, I grew up in Anaheim, Claremont. Uh, Ontario, but I say Claremont. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> Claremont's But yeah, we are Southern California guys. We always, I think like the time, in, the, t the time that we came together, I think what the, uh, we were not guys that uh, were hanging out with acoustic guitars and showing each other songs. We had a, like a big group of friends that were all just music fans. Yeah. And, um, and uh, this is the era of, you know, CDs, you know, you drive around in your car, this is like, you listen to albums. And, um, and I think what, uh, you know, the big group of friends that we had all around Long Beach and Whittier and Long Island and all these places, um, we uh, we j we were fans of music, and the stuff we liked was you know I I went to high school you know, I was like the the no doubts and sublimes yeah, and all the things that totally. were that were like very local um, and like very bright and uh, and I we definitely you know there's a, being more drawn to like uh, the Smiths and the Velvet Underground and the the weird the Captain Beefhearts and the whatever like. How, that felt way more exciting, you know, to, wow. um, uh, just to, I think, like, not be sunshine and waves and beach, you know, like, yeah, the it, anti. It, was, it was, yeah, it wasn't a part, like, a, a part of our, our DNA, I think, to, um, to be drawn to what was around us, um, yeah, I think we liked we liked punk we liked punk music a lot, but we were really snobby about what we liked. Ah, you know? okay, okay. Operation Ivy and Rancid, The Clash, Death Little Fingers, and these kinds of bands, and then not so much the, uh, you know, I don't want to say any well, names. We had, we, we, had a, we had a strange, yeah, yeah. I don't know, and then, and then like we, there was just so many. We just snobby, yes, mm -hmm. but also like a lot of things, like you know, we like we'd always go to this this dance club in Hollywood that had played all the like 60s soul, you know, just like hang out. Like, um, what was that place called? Club, club. What, the club. one, the one, uh, the shortstop? Where yeah, they play the soul music? No, it was like in Hollywood. Anyway, it was, oh. but anyway. Um, it's been a long time. Yeah. 
I feel like we're always kind of oddballs in that way. Um, uh, less drawn to like a specific scene of, of other people and more that we kind of, you know, identified more with people on tour. Um, our friends were in this band, The Color. They, um, they lived by us in Whittier and um, we got to learn everything about kind of what not to do by what they did. Um, <laughs> uh, and they, I mean, it, it, it's, um, if you're watching you guys, I'm sorry, but it's not, it's so old. <laughs> but like, um, but yeah, I mean, they, they like signed a big record label deal. They, they you know, made a very expensive record. They, they, they did everything in a way that we got to kind of watch and just go like, oh, you know, that's never, yeah. This this isn't you know this isn't cool um, and uh, but the the what you know one of the biggest things we got to learn is that it's just like um, you know their record label bought them a fifteen passenger van um, and I remember like that being the biggest light bulb moment for me of like oh my god we, we that's that's actually all we need you know if yeah. we just get that we can do everything we want to do ourselves and. Um, and we were in this place in life, I think, you know, Moss and I we went to school together uh, and we're both working separately and living separately and, and kind of had just enough of uh, a taste of real life and where it was going to be like, um, I want to go, like, I, I'll, I'll, you know, I will go hard. I will do everything, um, you know, all in on um, making this band happen because, um, yeah, it's just so so much of what I wanted, but kind of thought at that point like it just that maybe that ship had sailed. I we're talking about like you know um, growing up seeing a lot of punk bands, friends in punk bands. You know they toured and, and and they were done with it by the time they were twenty or something. You know, so I I kind of felt like oh that was that that was gone. Um, I never imagined it'd be possible to do. Um, music as something that was sustainable through, you know, through all this, so, um, so yeah, buy that band. Yeah, That's sometimes it's buy good to not and, be the first. Get Nobody's stopping you. Yeah. Nobody's just going to stop you from showing up at a weird bar in Bakersfield and, and playing for five people, and those truly, you know, it's a cliche, but, but those really are the, um, the greatest times in life. Right? <laughs> Not being uh, backstage with tears for fears and having a second helping of catering. Right? <laughs> Wise words. Well, congrats on just everything. Very excited for the album. Very excited for the tour. I'll let you guys do one more. Thank you guys so much for coming out. <laughs> Let's go first. Cheated and lied, broken so bad You made a vow, never get mad You played the game, though it's unfair They're all the same, who can compare? First you lose trust, then you can worry Night after night, bar after club Dropping like flies, who woke you up? On the front lawn, sprinklers out It's not your house, where'd you go?
Come on, baby.